So, welcome to Totally Integrated Instrumentation. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how we can connect to a Hydra Ranger 200 HMI, which sits on Profibus DP V1, um, and that is connected to a 1500 PLC. Um, if we have a look at our project. I'll uh, post the, the tech note for, for this on the comments, so please have a look because the connectivity is quite important. So when you look at your um, uh, your 1500 PLC, and in this case it's a, a 1516-3, we have two Profinet ports and a, well, nicknamed not Profinet, um, so this would be for configuring link to a HMI, whatever. Um, we have two, so we can do a redundant ring if we want to. I haven't got that programmed up, so you can see on my devices we've got in and out. So that's what the topology view is for. Um, so we're just going to focus on this, but it's really important when we're trying to connect with PDM that... Um, if we're routing through the PC, PLC, which is called data set gateway routing, that we connect to the Profinet port or one of the Profinet ports, and then PDM can pass through from Profinet to Profibus DP. So I'm going to keep this project open because we're going to need some settings. I have a PDM project here already open, ready. So, of course, one of the ways that we can connect, the simplest way, is if I just open this up, we would have a Profibus DP network in our project, and we would connect with some sort of adapter. Um, and there's there's a few adapters on the market, but um, I'm going to put uh, the information here so you can see. Um, that we recommend a PC adapter and you would connect that to, to the, the Profi bus port and, and then under here you would have your PC PG interface settings so you would have to um, set these to, to Profi bus so it's a question whether I've actually got it installed on this PC so um, under here you would have that device when it's plugged in so um, but that's not how we're going to do it on this project. I am connecting wirelessly to my network. So I have a wireless access point and we just need to make sure that um, that is set up here. Okay. So what we're going to have a go at doing with this project is we've got the compact field unit on here. So if I get properties. Um, so I try and break things down so it makes sense. Let's prove that the Profinet side of things is working. So our IP address that is 5.33. So if we go back to PDM, we're going to insert a new communication network, and that's going to be Profinet. So even though it's wireless, I am connected to my wireless access point is connected to the Profinet port on the PLC. So I have that here. And then on the properties, um, you have things like subnet ID. Now I don't need, require that for, for Profinet. And if I go to my adapters now, I can see my Ethernet interface here. Um, what I would recommend, if I go to object properties, on this we have communication so we can either use the PC PG interface or we can set it directly here and if you do that the nice thing is if you forget that with your PC PC PG interface say we've been using Profibus and you forget to turn it back you can waste time because you didn't realize and so you're trying to get the connection working so just keep this and do it here it's just then all within the project there's no external influence Okay, so we have our Profinet. So um, to prove that works, what you can do is onto the Profinet, insert a new object, and we can put in the IP address. And then click on Assign Device Type. We could search for it manually. If 
we've got a connection, we can click on device identification. And then we can see it's found my compact field unit. So I know my Profinet comms is good. So if I just do PDM update diagnostics, okay. So I've got a connection. It's something not it's not happy with on the compact field unit, but we want to get down to the DP. So the Profibus DP. So what we've got to do on the Profinet is insert a new object, and this will be the IP address of your Profinet port on your project. So if I click on this Profinet port 5.1, so 192. Okay, and then assign device type. And then on the network components, we have automation station. There is another way of doing it with these data set gateways. Both ways are very similar. They do, they just use up more tags. This this way uses up more tags, but um, it looks like you're going to get more functionality under here, like things like life list will will start working. So let's add that, and then you can see my automation station. If we go onto object properties and communication, we can see the rack. And the CPU slot, well, the CPU slot is actually slot two. And the rack, you can see that within your PLC project, again, is, is, is rack zero. Okay. So, okay. And then the next stage is to, under here, is now to add my, is to add a Profibus DP network. So, how does this routing um, get to the Profibus DP network and, and make a connection? Well, if we go to Object Properties, you'll see something under here say, saying Subnet ID. Okay. Um, and again, what you have to do is go to your, just click your network and you'll see your Subnet ID here. So, FAC3-2. So if we go back to PDM. So when we've set up the subnet ID, we also need to set the CP slot. So the Profibus DP slot is slot one. If you add other CP cards connected to the PLC, then that would change. Well, also the subnet ID would change. So there, there we have it. So last, last stage, we need to add the device. And again, if we go back to our project, the address of the device is 77. So we've proved that the, the cyclic comms is all working. So 77 here, and then assign device type. And under sensors, we can see um, the multi ranger. So, the multi ranger and the hydro ranger 200 are, are, are similar units um, one's for the water industry and one's for uh, general process industry. So if we click on OK, And if we want to, we can load the parameters from the device. So one of the things, so one of the things I like to do to prove comms is to open the object what we're going to try and do here is click on this process values. If you do view, you'll see process values as well. So if we click on that. This is set up for level stroke volume. So I can see here I have a level reading of 2.9. And if I come to my PLC tags, 
line with these, I have 2.972, 2.973. So I can see there that there's no scaling required um, and it's pulled through the process value into the PLC. That matches what PDM is setting, saying. So I'm, I'm happy with how everything is working there. So that was a, an overview of PDM connectivity through the Siemens PLC. It's important that um, if you have a another manufacturer PLC or a Siemens PLC that doesn't support the um, the acyclic data, data record routing, then you would need something called an IEPB link. Now that's an industrial Ethernet to Profibus link, and that would connect, as you can see here on the on the right hand side, it would connect and enable you to bypass the PLC, and that would allow you to go from um, Ethernet down to to uh, Profibus DP. But you would need one of those for each DP network. So hopefully um, that all makes sense. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed it.